As you take a look around, please take time to talk to our team members, to customers, to experts that are in the space, and make sure that you get all the information that you want. We hope that you ask us a lot of questions and really get the best use of your time because we know that you all took time to fly in during your seats. So we really, really appreciate that. Thank you. I'm going to go ahead and jump in. I'm not going to talk a lot about the tech flowing up here this morning. Talk about where we are, the industry, update you on some of our programs, and give some guidance to what's coming. Then I'll invite Daryl to come up and do the same. And then I'm going to let the tech go through Eric and Joe as you walk outside and see our ride and drives and be able to really experience why we're so passionate about Extra, despite an industry that makes it feel sometimes like it's rougher than I think it actually is. If I defined Extra, it would be resilience. It would be that ability to ride out what we're doing, arguably do financings that challenge some of our shareholders and how we did it, but funded our company to keep our tech going forward. The industry itself is at a pivotal moment. We have one of our global partners in our, in our pipeline right now saying, you guys are a giant leap and the industry takes big steps. There's three revenue streams for X-Rose technology today. The first one is our propulsion system, which is part of our merger with Sea Electric and April was that ability to accelerate our position in the market through our OEM partnerships by integrating into that propulsion system. With our Kino and Mac systems out back, you'll be able to see that integration today and you'll be able to drive the vehicles with the foil driver in it today. Then we have what's called our traction inverter, which is what we're calling our drive line today, is every inverter needs to control a motor. So with our drive line, we have our partner NEDEC here today, and that is what is in our class four and uh, four through eight is actually what we have right now. So that's what we know is our core technology. Think of it like a gearbox, electronic gearbox and a turbocharger, all in one, the brain of the system. And then finally, our energy storage unit. A lot of people have said, oh, did I just shelf that is on the shelf? No, we invested heavily to get a UL certification. It was a really, really tough road for us. It was almost two years to let us free that. That was because, again, we were disrupting. We were challenging the certification and regulation for itself as we did cell level control. We talk a lot about fires and thermal runway and energy storage and how do you manage that? But the innovation is how do you control it? How do you make it not happen versus manage it when it happens? That's innovation. That's where our patents sit. So those are the three streams of revenue that build our guidance for 2025. As you're out back, as you talk to Eric and Joe, back of the room in their back corner, Joe's on the corner, Joe, maybe raise your hand. Eric's right beside us, CTO and our SVP of N. Urine. Really great for all our analysts to have conversations there because that represents our merger. That's our merger right there. That demonstrates the importance of how we came together and how quickly we changed our path forward by having two sets of engineering skills that could accelerate both of our paths. A couple of partnerships. The one I'm going to highlight today is the one that's up in Brazil. With our partnership with EDEC, we were able to create a drivetrain that is tackling real world terrain, unlike any of the incumbent drivelines in the market today. We are climbing 18% brief hills, fully loaded trucks at full speed continuously. That is a really important piece of the electrification transition. When our OEMs can go into those dealers and say, you're not going to be limited to just your intercity routes, but you can take your big and bulky routes. You can make a refuge truck route, pick up a little bit more, go out to the countryside and not just in the city. This changes the conversation of electrification. We are not just going in and saying, hey, we have another truck, or hey, we have a battery storage unit where you're opened up to this large amount of competition and, and that's really differentiating. We do not need to put anything into our buildings. We use contract manufacturers. We do not need to resource up. We do not need to invest in certifications like ISO quality certifications that take 20 plus months to get here. These are all costs that have already been invested. We're ready to scale. As we think to the passenger vehicle, why are we burning in passenger vehicle as we're just coming out of here? Well, we're not actually burning. We have a very small team. The passenger vehicles pay into our programs. 
to develop innovation because in general, passenger vehicle programs take greater than four years to get from when you start to when you get to revenue. And so there's a longer path there. But we wanted to be able to show with Extra that we are agnostic. If it's electric, it needs an inverter. If it's electric, it needs a motor and inverter, and it needs that ability to control. And so we really wanted to make sure that we're able to be in hybrid. Maybe one day we go into hydrogen. We're able to do battery electric. We're able to do electric construction vehicles all the way down, depending on what customer has that volume and that path to profitable revenue. As we look at passenger vehicle, I'm just going to say we have our program with Stellantis. I know everybody wants to know what is exactly going on. We have not publicly defined what the path of Stellantis is, but we entered that program to win a platform. We entered that program to beat that volume production in the future, where it's more of a licensing model, but using kind of the guts of the call driver. And that's progressing exactly as we thought it would, and the, the partnership's been great. Our other two mid-stage and late-stage, there's two other passenger vehicle programs, continue as we intended. That means mid-stage means we're, we're through all of the simulated work. We know that we're going to be able to bring benefit that they can't find in the market today, and we're into commercial terms and seeing what that looks like. Late-stage means we're through those commercial terms, and we're kind of waiting for them to come back and put that teeth on paper. There's no guarantees, but they're moving exactly as we thought they would. Before we oppose the acquisition, Sea Electric, there was 19 systems that were delivered in AQ1. And then we closed on April 5th. We had big accounts payable. We had inventory that, you know, wasn't on site. So we spent a lot of time through Q2 really working through the supply chain, making sure that parts were arriving efficiently. We weren't air freighting everything from China, which, you know, led to our direct per unit costs of over $200,000 vehicle EQ2. And that was, you know, that was a, a bigger number than uh, what anyone wants to absorb, but we were committed to delivering to our customers. And so that's really what it took. We drove 5.3 million of revenue in Q2 on the delivery of 36 units. We more than doubled that into Q3. And importantly for a tech company, usually when you've got growth of this kind of a nature, you're spending your way to growth on a per unit basis. And what we were able to successfully do was drive down those unit costs by over 20%. And so that came from not just a little bit of prayer, that came from a lot of work from a lot of people that you see in the room, but a real focus on our supply chain and our logistics. And it comes back to our focus on that path to profitability. In terms of uh, what it does, I mean, at the end of the day, right, it's, it eliminates the spots, it's a big one. Um, and does the great charging into the architecture of the drive essentially allows the to do the plug in? Right? Is that very voltage? And now there's something to do with the side. <laughs> and you can plug in a three phase connector, use the coil driver, and charge your batteries. But now we can crank up the power. Um, J3480, you can go up to 60, 80 uh, kilowatts. So you're able to do with that. And now you're competing with a DC fast charger at the end of the day. DC fast charger, and I, I'm going to use some cowboy math. My, my rule of thumb is $1,000 per kilowatt hour. Um, and so you want a 25 kilowatt DC fast charger on the wall, that's $25,000. And now with the, the 3480 standard that we're talking about, that's a $2,000 charger that I can put on the wall and be able to charge the vehicle with the XOR coil driver. So very exciting if you're kind of looking at the next tech trends of what we're working towards to be able to do something along those lines. Because one thing I do hear in the market, and we watch it very closely, is the DC infrastructure for charging. Um, it's, a, it's a problem that we can solve uh, with the XOR technology at the end of the day, being able to do that.
And the, and the opportunity yeah. here is that, is that the coil driver allows you to delete this cost, delete this cost, delete this cost, and delete this cost. Um, and to provide that functionality much more cost effectively here, 